Hey, what's up, you guys? What's up, it's like to see you. Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning, guys. Hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, what's up, you guys? We're here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Mount Yona, Pond City Market for New York City, Letchworth Village, Stone Mountain, Pondre Antique. I am so excited. Hey, what's up, you guys? So, by the title and thumbnail of this video, I'm sure you have a pretty good idea of what my big announcement is, but I decided to make this video so I could break it down for you guys a little more than I could in a singular Facebook post. I'm sure all of my family and friends have a lot of questions about my decision, so I hired my best friend to ask me the questions that I'm sure you guys would ask me if you were here with me in person. What? What do I mean I'm quitting my job to travel the world? Well, exactly that. Ever since moving to Atlanta, I have had a lot of trouble trying to find an editing job and I've been stuck working at the Cheesecake Factory. Don't get me wrong, it's a great company to work for and I make more money than I would paying on different sets, but neither of those are things that I actually want to do with my life. If this past year has taught me anything, it's that all we're really meant on this earth is to do what makes us happy. Go out and do things that make you happy. And ever since graduating, I started watching a lot of travel vlogs because travel is what makes me happy. In July, I took it upon myself to start making them. I'm an editor. And I used to film a lot before college, but when I went to college, I felt like I had to choose one thing to do, and that was editing because that was what I loved the most. But now I realize I didn't have to choose one. I love filming, so I started it back up again. Since July, I've made about 13 vlogs in places that I loved seeing and experiencing, and used my skills to make tasteful videos to show you guys what it's like as if you were with me. But all I complain about is how I wish I had time to do it more. But how can I? I work 50 to 60 hours a week with one day off, maybe. I'm limiting myself to what I can create because I don't have time for it. They tell you to always make time for the things you love, but how can I when I have to afford a place to live, utilities, gas, car insurance, etc. without spending most of my time at work. Unless I figure out how to get rich quick, I can't. If you have the answer, please do share. As most of you know, I had both of my animals pass away this year. It really broke my heart and I'll miss them for the rest of my life, but the main reason that I had this house was for them. They're animals, they need a warm place to sleep at night, and they have to have somewhere to go when I go to places that they can't come with me to. You can ask any of my closest friends. Before they passed away, I would always say, I love my animals to death and will be there for them till the day they die, but if I didn't have animals, I would drain my savings and go travel the world. When I would talk about it, I would talk about it lightly because I assumed that I would have Zoe until I was at least 26. When she passed, traveling wasn't my first thought. I have a house with my best friend who I love more than anything and would live with her for the rest of my life if I could. But as time passed, we both realized how depressed we were, struggling with our job every day just to get by. How could we get to the life we wanted ourselves when all we do is set ourselves up with all these bills that we have to pay? We wanted to move to Colorado because it's a beautiful and peaceful place to live, but it's a lot more expensive than Atlanta and we're already struggling enough to begin with. Just Jess wasn't happy, I wasn't happy, and something needed to change. This brings us back to the only life goal, happiness. Jess told me what would really make her happy in life, and it's up to her discretion to share with you guys what that is, as she asked me not to announce it in this video, but it will make her happier than she's ever been. But it's not along the lines of anything that I want to do in life. I want to go out in the world and see everything for myself. I want to learn about important things, the way people think, other ways people live, about different cultures, about things that I don't see every day and don't consider normal, things that have real meanings that aren't just taught systematically to people in books. I want things that will shock and excite me. So not even 10 minutes after Jess told me what she wanted to do, I looked her right in the eyes and said, I'm going to travel the world. It wasn't even something that I considered doing that morning, but when she told me that, I knew right away that that's what I was meant to do. If I stay in this cycle of work, sleep, repeat with a job that does not give me any fulfillment to what I actually want to do in my life, I'm going to go crazy. Love my coworkers and management. Y'all are great, but a girl can only bust so many tables before her head's going to pop off. This brings us to your next question. How? Now, I'm sure your next thought is, how are you going to accomplish this? You just said you can't spend any time away from work because you have all these bills you have to pay. What makes you think you could drop everything and travel the world? Well, at first, I didn't think it was possible. Most of us live in a world where we're taught to go to school, go to college, get a career, get married, have kids, retire. After milestone number two, I realized that the next things on those lists didn't really excite me. Staying in the same place, doing the same job every day, getting a house with a husband or wife and having kids all made me make a face like this. It's not for me. So step one would be break the cycle. If I don't have a stable place to live, my bills automatically go down $700 a month. If I don't have a car, another $400 a month. Now I have a house full of a lot of things that I don't need. I have three dining room tables, don't ask. I have old shelves and desks and old workout equipment that I don't use that somebody who lives in a house would use. So I started selling them. My lease is up in March and I will not be renewing it. I'll pack up the rest of the things that I decided to not sell into a small storage unit for about $60 a month. And from there, my lovely mother said that I can spend a few months on her couch while I continue to work and save up money. So at this point, I'll be paying for car insurance, a small storage unit totaling about $250 a month. My mom really doesn't live far from cheesecake at all, so gas won't be that expensive. And the best thing about working in a restaurant is that I always get free food, so I don't 
don't have to worry about that either. So between March and June, I'll be able to save up about $2,500 a month for my trip while living minimalistically. Now with all the research I've done for my trip, it looks like I'm going to need about $12,000 to comfortably, and by comfortably I mean always have a roof over my head at night and food to eat, travel where I want to go in the time that I have allotted. With my math, I will have everything that I need by my departure date. Which brings us to Jess's next question. When? So in 170 days, on June 20th, I will be departing from JFK Airport and flying to Dublin, Ireland, where I will hop from country to country by either plane or train over the course of six months. I've chosen the time period of six months because I feel like that is the amount of time that I will need to know if making vlogs and blogs full time is really what I want to do. One week or one month is not enough time for me to know and saving up enough money for a whole year of travel is a lot to put on my shoulder. So I've given myself six months to see if I can turn my passion into an actual career. Best case scenario, people love my work, YouTube and AdSense start paying me, and sponsors will help me continue my travel by paying for me to do so. Worst case scenario, I come back to the United States with no money but a lot more experience in film and travel than I ever would have had without going and it will help me secure a job in a travel company which is what I would want to do and who I would want to work for and make videos for if it's not myself. I'll be home just in time for Christmas so I could share all of my stories with my friends and family. Where? <laughs> so let me break down for you how my trip is going to go. I've been doing a lot of research about the legal ways to stay in country for a certain amount of time without needing a visa. So this itinerary is based off the cheapest and easiest ways for me to see everything that I want to see legally. So step one is leaving my car at someone's house in South Carolina where it'll be safe. And I'm going to cancel my car insurance because I won't need a car for six months. And that'll take a lot out of my spending. I'll then fly from South Carolina to New York where I'll say goodbye to my friends and family. And I'll depart from JFK Airport on June 20th to land in Dublin, Ireland. Then I'll spend two weeks exploring Ireland by train, then I'll be flying from Dublin to London to spend another two weeks there. $60 plane ticket. At the end of those two weeks, I'll activate my Eurail Pass. I bought this on Cyber Monday when they were $400 off their original price of $1,300. Hey guys! Oh my god, I am so excited right now. I am about to buy my Eurail Pass. It is Cyber Monday, which means I get about $400 off, and I was not expecting that, so of course I'm gonna buy it right now. $882. I got the pass protection. I got the shipping. I am ready to hit pay. I'm going to Europe, guys. This pass allows me to travel by train all throughout Europe for three months, which is the amount of time that I'm allowed to be in the Schengen region of Europe without needing a visa. I'll take the train first from London to Barcelona where I will meet Jess for her birthday. We will travel around Spain until she leaves me in August where I will continue to hit all the major cities in Europe by train until October 15th. I will end in Athens, Greece where I'll then take another plane and fly to Bali, Indonesia. I'll be traveling all over Bali for the remainder of the two months and take buses to Ubud, Changyu, Seminyak, etc. while seeing all the beautiful beaches and waterfalls that Bali has to offer. And the best part about Bali, it's insanely cheap. I am able to get by comfortably on $500 a month. I can get an Airbnb, a nice Airbnb, for about two to 300 a month, and eating out can be as cheap as a dollar. My vlogs will be about getting the most out of travel for the cheapest prices. Also, to stay in Bali for 60 days, I'll only need a $100 visa. I will then fly from Bali back to JFK, and this brings us to our final question from Jess. <laughs> Aside from what I already discussed in the previous questions, here is one of my biggest reasons as to why I'm doing this. If you know me well, you know that I have anxiety and depression and it's one of the biggest things in my life that I've yet to overcome. Talking to new people, meeting new people, talking into my camera, filming strangers are all things that make me very uncomfortable. But Lindsay, you do so well when talking in your travel vlog. Yeah, but you guys don't see all the takes that I do. You went to beta nightclub that day. We are going to be checking out some pretty cheap, but also affordable. Thank it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get some more footage of walking around. All right. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. That's the beauty of editing. Anyway, those are all things that I suck at and I want to get better at. Staying inside, then spending 8 to 15 hours a day at work just to repeat it the next day is all awful for my depression. I'm my happiest self when I'm visiting new places or sitting on top of a mountain. I just hate the fact that the times that I get to travel are so far and few between. Taking a solo trip, with the exception of having my friends come and visit me in the places that they want to see too, is really going to push me to my limit. I'm going to have to talk to people I don't know. I'm going to get lost and confused and put in situations that I normally wouldn't be Put in. I'm going to have to talk alone to my camera on streets full of people if I want to capture absolutely everything about a place and what it has to offer. How many solo vlogs have I done so far? None. 
If I want to reach my goals, I have to get rid of my anxiety and get out of my comfort zone. Staying in one place for too long makes me depressed. I've seen a pattern in my life. Move to a new place, love it for a little bit, and then wind up hating it. It happened with Florida, and it happened with Georgia. I don't want to hate where I live. I should love it. So I have to go out and do and find what makes me happy. As one of my favorite bands said in one of their songs, you know that big ball of radiation we call the sun? Well, it'll burst you into flames if you stay in one place for too long. And it's true. I can't stay in one place forever. It's just not for me. I'm excited for this adventure of a lifetime, and I'm so excited to share with all you guys. Over the next few months, I'll be sharing videos about my plan more in depth while continuing my travel vlogs. I've also set myself a schedule, so I'll be posting one new vlog every week on Fridays. My plan videos will include places that I'm staying, cheapest ways of transportation, cheapest activities that I can find in these places, and making budgets for myself. If you have any more questions about my trip or think you'll want to accompany me for any of it, please let me know. I depart in 170 days and I'm finally ready to go out and do what's going to make me the happiest I've ever been. Are you doing what makes you the most happy?